In January 2021, there was a breakthrough moment in football. A player was bought using cryptocurrency for the first time in the history of the game. Now, you might be wondering who this is. Well, it's David Barrao. He was signed by Spanish Division II side Dux International. But why is it significant? Well, up until now, football's relationship with the technology has been pretty non-existent, to say the least. But things are changing. So much so that this man's PSG contract even included fan tokens as part of the deal. We'll come on to those shortly. But the question we're asking this week is football and cryptocurrency a match made in heaven? Hello there, I'm Sam Ashu and welcome to Football Now from Doha. Now let's take you back to 2015 when Bitcoin was just a mere buzzword that you'd probably see pop up on social media every so often. But it was also the year that goalkeeper David De Gea came within just minutes of joining Spanish giants Real Madrid. The reason he didn't? The fax machine was just too slow. Unbelievable, I know. But what if he was bought using cryptocurrency then? Honestly, he'd probably still be at the Bernabeu now. But what exactly is Bitcoin itself? A cryptocurrency is essentially like any other type of currency. It's a medium of exchange. Um, the main difference being that it's created digitally. It's created through a process of cryptography, which is essentially the art of knitting together um, different pieces of code. So how might this impact football then? Well, Italian Serie C side Rimini FC became the first club to be sold using it after 25% of their stake was purchased using Quantcoin. AZ Alkmaar became the first Dutch club to pay its players in Bitcoin, whilst Premier League Watford have even got a logo on their shirt. What cryptocurrencies allow sports organisations to do is to build value, um, create value, and capture that value in, in a fairly unique way. Meanwhile, another David thinks it's all just one big marketing ploy. I'm not sure how much is actually a growing thing as a heavily marketed thing. Those aren't the same thing. People have been trying to push this for about four years now, where they'll sell some token as a sort of fan club ticket or like, like supermarket loyalty points for a football club. And they say it's all very crypto, it's very technological, it's, we don't understand it, but it's very cool. So that's all marketing. Um, I, don't, I would say don't believe the hype. So then we know that some, not many clubs have dabbled in the world of buying and selling using crypto as currency and not the traditional bank transfer, but what about the other side of crypto, fan tokens? Well, this is the man leading the charge in football. Hi, my name is Alex Dreyfus and I'm the CEO of Socio.com. Yeah, Socios already have over 60 clubs to their name, including the likes of Barcelona, PSG, AS Roma and Atletico Madrid. But how exactly do they work? Socios.com was created three years and a half ago, and we came up with this idea by um, working and talking with a sports team and football club especially, because 99.9% .9 of their fans are not in the stadium, not in the city, and sometimes not even in the country uh, of the team uh, at all. The question was, what can we create for teams and sports teams that can help them to engage and monetize their fan base? Socios describes itself as the fan influence platform, giving supporters the opportunity to put their opinions across on club matters. We believe that fan tokens and digital assets in general is going to definitely, maybe not change football, but it's going to be part of this disruption that is needed to actually make sports and football a little bit closer to the fans. We, we think that in the next five to 10 years, the relationship between fans and clubs is gonna go from a passive fan to an active fan. So essentially, you download the app, you buy a token, and then that gives you access to make decisions such as the club crest, the kit design, and even the pre-match music. Seems simple enough, but can it change football? These schemes have been going on for years, most of them never quite go anywhere, they never quite take off. And I don't see a lot of them taking off in the future because it the crypto bits just for marketing, it's really just tokens for fans to trade or get um, things in the uh, shop or whatever. We, we think that sometimes there is a misunderstanding in what we do. We are not here to help clubs to monetize the so-called local funds. We are here more to try to find a new way to engage and monetize the global funds. 
It's not about being good or bad. It's just what happened. Finally, then, what is this three-letter word that we all keep hearing about, then? NFTs. Well, NFT stands for non-fungible tokens. This is a digital asset. For example, you can buy a video of a sporting moment. You at home could literally own Lionel Messi's first-ever goal. Might be a bit pricey, though. There could also be a digital piece of artwork, like this, from Manchester City. Or you can even get your hands on a digital trading card. For example, a one-of-a-kind Cristiano Ronaldo one recently sold for as much as $290,000. Look, crypto might be complex, it might be volatile, but it is here to stay. And if the current trends are anything to go by, we're set for a future of Bitcoin wages, decisions from fans on apps, and even virtual card trading. But most importantly, what do you think at home? Is football set for a big future with cryptocurrency, or is it all just one big marketing stunt? Do let us know using the hashtag FootballNowCrypto and join us again next time on Football Now.